Hello, hello, hello guys, and welcome back to Joe's Ventures, and today we're going to be doing another episode of our Jurassic World Evolution 2 Mod Spotlights, where we took a look, take a look at some of the wonderful mods people have been making, and compare them to their real-life fossil counterparts, and we're going to be doing a lot of that today, because we have got the Hadrosauriformes uh, pack, uh, cosmetic pack, uh, by Hockal1215, who does a lot of really cool paleo edits. So this pretty much revitalizes all the Hadrosaur reformies, so the Inguanodontians and the Hadrosaurs, in the game to make them look much more accurate to their real-life counterparts. So that is something really cool, and we're going to get stuck into that. We're going to go through alphabetical order, so I'm not going through for the most famous ones down, we're going through alphabetical order. So we're going to be starting off, you know, if we all know our ABCs, starting with C. So we have got here uh, two different species of Carithosaurus. So we're going to be starting off with the first one. So this is Carithosaurus. Uh, Carithosaurus uh, casuarensis. You can see this one definitely got uh, a good amount of love. So, oh yeah, and it does that. Anyway, come on. So this is uh, Corythosaurus casuarensis. So this is the first uh, of the holotype species. Uh, so this was found in 1911 by Barnum Brown and Red Deer River in Alberta. And then it was described in, I think, 1914. So, what this guy really fixed up, so there's a lot that's been fixed up from this guy from the original Jurassic World 1, because uh, some of the older hadrosaurs in the game, uh, I mean like older in terms of like the ones that look like more like 90s reconstructions, like Parasaurolophus, Allura Titan, uh, things like that, a lot of them had been, you know, kind of like a kangaroo, walking around on their back legs like a kangaroo, with the arms up, you know, pronated like a kangaroo, uh, but actually... The most hadrosaurs now is believed they would have walked on all fours. So this is a great example of that. And you can see that's changed. Different rig to make it look a little bit nicer. And this is the species uh, that's most well known. There was actually up to seven species described at one point of uh, Carithosaurus. Uh, but we'll get into the other ones. So most of them have been lumped into uh, Casparensis. But um, the other one we'll talk about, Intermedius, is the one we'll be talking about next. So this is the one that's kind of the one. So you can see um, what really, really cool about it is you can see it's got that really long skull and it it's kind of gets its name, the Carithosaurus, from the Carithian helmets, uh, or kind of looks like a cassowary, like that cask there. So that definitely reconstructed quite well. Uh, you can see now, as I mentioned, walking on all fours too, very nice big round body, a little bit of a longer tail, but also you can see here, correct feet. So I'll get, when we talk about Amontosaurus and Nectens, we'll talk about this a little bit more in detail, but we know that these hadrosaurs would have uh, had kind of, instead of being really toey like the original game ones, these guys would have had kind of a flesh mitten with a little bit of a shock absorber, you can see there. What was originally thought to be webbing as well, which is quite interesting, is actually found to be kind of like part of the toe pad for these guys. Got those two nails and the claw there. That would have been one big like fleshy mitten is the best way to describe it. And what's really cool about Carithosaurus as well is that we do have a pretty good idea. A lot of these hadrosaurs, we actually have a much better idea of what their scale uh, patterns were like. So so this actually has a pretty good idea of, you know, this is actually pretty spot on to what they potentially would have looked like in terms of their uh, scale pattern as well. So you can see that Hockow did a really great job representing that, which is really, really cool. But anyway, as I mentioned, this is a species. This is the first one. So yeah, really, really nice. You've got that really you no know, tall dome. Looks really, really good. Definitely a big fan. And I'm going to also got to say those colors look so amazing. You know, Hockow always knocks it out of the park with those colors so we're gonna let them run off and do their thing we'll have a look at the next species so next one here is index uh, intermedius So as I mentioned before, a lot of those species that I mentioned, uh, the kind of seven different species of uh, Carithosaurus described, a lot of them were actually lumped because 
uh, a lot of those differences actually seem to have been uh, related to sex or age differences so one being younger and older or male or female so they weren't different species they were just different ages and sexes of the first species but there's one species is kind of uh, always kind of uh, regarded valid valid in some studies so typically sometimes it's only the one species of Corythosaurus casuarensis kind of described and considered you know that's the one but sometimes this one's considered valid as well so this is uh based on a specimen rom 776 uh, which is a skull found by levi sternberg in 1920 and it was named by william parks in 1923 originally it was named stephanosaurus intermedius uh but then was lumped into uh Carithosaurus. it lived slightly later than the other species uh so about a million years later or so so they're both from the dinosaur park formations and and that supported the separation of them in the kind of the 2009 study and they're not too different from each other uh the main way you can tell is the skull as you can see uh cassiaris uh kind of has a much more rounded uh, uh crest this guy's got a lot more of a tall crest kind of sticks out a bit more a little bit of a short tail uh not too many major differences uh in comparison but yeah really really cool really nice patterns as well i like hawk owls uh dedication to giving us all the species which is really really cool so I'll let you run off and do your thing of course looks really really nice so next up we've got edmontosaurus so we've got here edmontosaurus and nectens the big one from the cretaceous you know the t-rex uh living one <laughs> So here is the Nectins, the big man on campus. Uh, everyone's kind of big favorite. We'll have a look at one that's kind of standing in a all right position. I want to see one, you know. We'll have a look at you. Oh, we'll have a look at you then. So this is eonectens so there's currently two different species of edmontosaurus described there is eonectens and e regalis so we'll talk about eonectens so this guy is known from the frenchman formation in saskatchewan the hell creek formation in montana and the lance formation in south dakota and wyoming and it's typically limited to late Maastrichtian rocks so this is the species that was kind of the latest and greatest uh so this guy became extinct around uh, the end of the cretaceous with the rest of the other dinosaurs uh, non-avian dinosaurs that is and uh is actually quite well known we do have some soft tissue from this guy as well and lots of skulls and some postcranial remains and actually it's been actually described by craig desler as one of the perhaps perfectly known dinosaurs to date in 1994 we have a lot better now um some other species if you remember anatosaurus or anatotitan uh or trachodon has been lumped into edmontosaurus and nectens and some of them being gross stages of each other and things like that and trachodon as well so the way you can kind of tell apart uh, Irigalus and Eonectens, so the original game one was actually um, Eonectens, uh, because uh, the website uh, with the art done on the website by Julius Chitoni, he actually did Eonectens, but then Frontier decided we're going to put a, the Regalus crest on it and make it pretty much an Eonectens with a Regalus crest. So it's a hybrid of both species, but this is pretty much spot on just Eonectens. So the main way to tell it apart, they've got like a longer, less robust skull, much longer face. We actually do have pretty well preserved beaks from these guys. We have pretty well preserved skin from both species as well. So you can see uh, that duckbill kind of original uh, way of saying, oh, the duckbill dinosaurs, they're not really. They've got these huge beaks that we just didn't see because we didn't have the preserved um, Rephithika or kind of uh, beak that was preserved. You can see really, really nice there. It's got those little you know nubs on the top there. And the species, as we mentioned uh, with the um, mittens, it was actually a specimen of E. anectens, so this is pretty spot on to what the latest would have looked like. So it would have had kind of that big one there and a smaller one to the side, you see there, and all that extra bit of padding, which was thought to be webbing, because we originally thought that these guys were aquatic, but um, that would actually be like a little fleshy pad, almost like the toes of an elephant, you know, to help squash in that blow a bit. But yeah, really, really cool. Uh, 
a really really long tail and it was actually originally considered anectens was the smaller of the two species but we do have fragmentary specimens of eonectens that potentially got up to 13 to 15 meters long so which makes sense it lives with tyrannosaurus so being bigger probably helped a bit with predators so um that's quite interesting as well the size thing it was often seen as smaller but these big specimens were pretty much up there and actually were up there with Shatungosaurus which is considered the largest hadrosaur so these guys were up there with the biggest hadrosaurs of all time and kind of the biggest non-sauropodian uh, dinosaur which is quite interesting so yeah really really cool anyway we are going to move on so that's uh, Eonectens let them run off do their thing next up we've got the other species this is E. regalis So here is E and Nectens, big man on campus. Okay, here we are. So E and Nectens is another very similar one. As I mentioned, they're both the same genus, so they're not too different apart. The main way to tell them apart is typically the skull and the comb. So we do have, as I mentioned, pretty good ideas of um, well, the soft tissue of this guy, which is really, really cool. Skin impressions of both species. Uh, especially as we mentioned like regalis which has uh, the comb as we'll get into so the main way to tell the two different species apart is mentioned the age so this guy not being found later this is a little bit earlier they are from alberta um, the horseshoe canyon formation from the late campanian so if you're looking at anything that lives with albertosaurus it'd be this guy if you're looking really tyrannosaurus it would be a neck dens but the main way to tell them apart is that regalis is kind of like a more stout, shorter, more robust skull. And you can see it's almost got like a high inner brow there. And another way as well, as you can see, it lacks that comb. So as I mentioned, we both have soft tissue from both species. And actually, we found this interesting comb. So this is a great example of like what we could be missing from the fossil record. Most people didn't really reconstruct regalis with a comb until uh, it was found. So I think that's quite interesting uh that we you know there's all these when we reconstructing dinosaurs there's all these soft tissue things that they could have had that we really don't know and this was a great example of one we'd like just caught it in the act so this is a great example of one of those which is quite cool we also they had some different scales uh both species had slightly different scale patterns so um these guys also there's a very you know interesting beak and what also as well these guys would have had a little bit more big rounded scales so another way to tell them apart as well uh was because we have such good anatomy from them but yeah really really cool so you can see the kind of interesting shape the head's a little bit more horse-like in my opinion really really big beak uh, same feet as usual a little bit smaller these guys got to about 12 meters uh as i mentioned while well, the neck probably got a little bit bigger even though it's often considered smaller uh so it's they're pretty similar in most regards yeah really really cool definitely a big fan you can see uh, that head very big round body those perfect feet really really nice everyone's gonna think i have a thing for feet but it's just the thing that everyone gets wrong the most with dinosaurs yeah, and a little bit longer tail as well you know everything as well but yeah the really interesting is that uh as i mentioned before you know the original site one if you go back to the original jurassic world site and looked at the art by julius Chitoni, it was literally just the jurassic world one uh without a comb uh, because it was E. regalis and I mean E. Anectens, and E. Anectens didn't have a comb from, from as far as we know because uh, we do have pretty good well preserved um, skull, uh, skin impressions from that one and didn't have a comb but uh, Frontier just decided we're going to add a comb to it so uh, they basically just made regalis and then put a comb on it so that's basically what they did but yeah looks really really nice I'm definitely a big fan of these guys they'll let them run off and do their thing next up Oh, no, Wait, that's a bit of a teaser for the future. Next up, we've got, uh, going back a little bit further in time, we have got Iguanodon. So let's have a look at Iguanodon. You're not loving Iguanodon. It's a guana dope. Let's see. We'll have a look at you. Why not? 
since you're actually standing in the sun for us. So this is Iguanodon. So Iguanodon was one of the first dinosaur species described and was also considered a waste bucket taxon. So kind of what happened was a lot of animals that were looked very similar, like, oh, that's just a species of Iguanodon. But there's actually a lot of species that were considered Iguanodon now are actually considered their own thing. So things like Mantellosaurus is another great ex example. So the, uh, there's at the moment two different species considered valid, but there's a lot more that were considered things. Like originally Hypsilophodon was actually, Foxy was considered a species of Iguanodon. Um, some other species have been kind of lumped, in, uh, split into their own genera, as I mentioned, like Mantellosaurus, uh, Mantellodon, uh, Hypsilophodon, uh, Valdosaurus, uh, Darwinosaurus. Uh, so a lot of different species had been uh, split into their own things. So the really the only two stand today. So the two that stand today is um, Iguanodon uh, bersalensis, which was described by George Albert Buller in 1881, um, which is the type species of the genus. And this species was best known for many skeletons discovered around the Santa Bell Clays Formation, which is known mostly around Europe. And there's a few different species that had been lumped into it. Uh, so uh, kind of, you know, big taxonomic re re revision. So a lot of species that were considered their own have been now lumped into uh, uh, Berestalensis. But yeah, this is kind of the most common well-known uh, known species of Iguanodon. But you can see it's quite cool. It's got that very, very interesting uh, box-like face. So the very interesting thing of Iguanodon, it really nails it. I just love Iguanodon, it is quite a cool animal. So that very big boxy face it's got, a big skeletal diagram. I've got one here, very interesting face. Quite a long neck too. So this is Iguanodontian, it's one of those little later ones that was getting a bit bigger. Very interesting as well, you can see the toes here. I'll explain this when we get to um, Aranosaurus. But um, here you can see, oh, don't worry about it, that's my phone. You can see you've got the, um, uh, um, I lost my words, uh, you can see the skin kind of connecting the both to becoming those, um, just quickly look at my phone. Anyway, we'll worry about that. But you can see those are starting to become those um, kind of mittens that we see in Corythosaurus and, you know, Edmontosaurus. And we'll, when we get to Aranosaurus, we'll go through that kind of evolution there. But you can see it's still starting to connect. Uh, you can see only the two digits there have nails, while the, uh, the other one doesn't. It's got the big thumb spike, which is very characteristic of Iguanodon. Potentially used, you know, to stab predators, but most likely to stab each other with, like, fighting disputes. Uh, personally, I know uh, those kind of sexual characteristics are so underrated. And he's got the little thumb. Uh, another one as well, and yeah, got them interesting as well. You can see the scale patterns in these guys is incredible. Um, yeah, it looks really, really nice. This is probably one of the worst. Uh, well, not bad. This isn't bad, but like this, that green color. Uh, the pattern itself is really nice. I really like this kind of brown. I'm a big fan of browns and yellows, and I do like a lot of brighter colors. It's sometimes, you know, need to be. It's just the saturation of that. If that was a darker, you know, it would look a little bit better to me. But that's just with the extra color core. So this does ex require the expanded color um, mod, uh, which just adds more colors for you to play with. And considering there's more colors to play with, it's just really, really nice. I'm definitely a big fan. Uh, really, really cool. I like this. One. This is my favorite out of, the, out, of the, out of the four, I think. Yeah, really, really cool. So we'll let them run off and do their thing. We'll have a look at the next species. So we've got uh, Gavalensis, which is the next one. So this is a mention, a little one of the newer ones. And I just love the pattern on this one. I love, as I was saying before, you know, I like the patterns. I just like how this one came out. I just like those patterns really, really much. Really so much. It just came out so nicely. Anyway, so this is another similar one. So it wasn't too different. So this is uh, described in 2015. So it's a newer species uh, based on adult and juvenile remains found in the Barian Age deposits in Spain. So uh, a little bit different. So likely it would have been a little bit of a different habitat at the time. So that's the other species considered valid. Um, not too much actually different between them. They're both quite similar. But you can see the div uh, anatomy there, you know. 
much more accurate you know thicker head bigger you know bigger beak going on there big round body big neck and i like this a little bit of a, like a almost like a dewlap going on very really big robust arms this is uh iguanodon was kind of the first of the iguanodontians or some of them that were starting to get really big and walking around on all fours so this is kind of that transition to that and also they've got the bigger thumb spikes as well um you also see the big round body too uh especially got the big pubis so they would have had lots of room for their guts to digest plants and things like that and a little bit of a longer tail so it's come out rather nicely definitely a big fan of that so let you run off and do your thing of course it's both species of iguanodon done next up we've got a couple that uh didn't require too many changes uh some of them have got some changes but we've got next we've got the great mother lizard we've got a myasaura So the original uh, Myasaura in game was actually pretty spot on, but they, I like these little changes as well. I think it looks really, really nice. Just better textures, you know, change the feet to be more accurate as well as you're going to see going on here. Uh, a little bit of a longer tail, just better textures and things like that. And I think we'll talk about some changes in the skull as well. So Myasaura itself, uh, original in game was, you know, pretty good, but those little tweaks uh, made it a little bit better in my opinion. Very interesting skull. It's got like a really sharp, like downturned jaw, uh, as well. Very boxy, uh, rectangular skull. So one of the little things was changed as well, which is really cool. This, unlike a lot of other Sorolophine hadrosaurs, so it is kind of in the group that includes, as I mentioned, Parasaurolophus. It's a, it's a more specific family is Brachy. Uh, Brachylophosaurini, so it is more closely related to things like brachy Brachylophosaurus. Uh, so this one didn't have quite a huge crest, so unlike a lot of its relatives, it had a kind of short crest between their eyes, almost like a big monobrow. So these guys may have potentially actually been using them to kind of like butt each other or in something like a little bit of a horn or something. So it's another way to tell them apart. Um, mentioned from the Horseshoe Canyon, so these guys would have um, lived in the Two Bedison Formation. And, you know, they're good mother lizards, so they're quite good mothers. Uh, we, this is, we have a great idea of, you know, we have lots of specimens and good idea of uh, parental care and hadrosaurs because of these guys. But yeah, original one was not that bad, but this is the one that gives it, you know, the updates. So you can see a bit of feet, bit of textures, just bit of everything. Looks really, really nice. And I really like the skin in particular. It just strikes me as mallard because you can see you've got that quite, you know, bright head and also the orange is almost like the beak. But I just love the patterns on this guy, you know. Every pattern is unique, uh, especially with the extra color core. really gives it some really awesome colors. I quite like this one as well, you know, with the red and the white and black contrast. They really just come out so wonderfully, you know. Hokal really just killing it with the skins. But yeah, really, really awesome. So, yeah, that one's good. We're going to let it run off and do its thing. Next up, we have got another one that got a bit of love. We have got a Laura Titan. So Allura Titan was another one of those ones that did suffer from the kangaroo. It was walking around like a kangaroo when it clearly did not. If you've seen Prehistoric Planet, this is from the late, it's from the Mastrictian, so quite at the late Cretaceous. So this is the one seen in Prehistoric Planet, the one with all the mosquitoes. Uh, really, really nice reconstruction. So instead of walking around like a kangaroo, it's on all fours using a different rig, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, this is Laura Titan. So this is from the uh, late Cretaceous of Russia. So it is found around the Amur River. Which is quite interesting and is actually one of the more complete ones actually found outside of the uh, north america which is quite cool and it was quite large in comparison with hadrosaurs and things like parasolophus cryptochristus so about eight meters long and about three and a half meters tall and about three tons or so it's quite big what well, sets this guy apart you can see that really interesting hatchet shape of the crest what's really interesting as well is that a lot of reconstructions actually don't reconstruct uh, they re reconstruct the whole thing, but a lot of the bottom of the crest would have actually potentially been connected by ligaments and things like that. So it's kind of created this really interesting look to it. Very, very tall skull. Very, very, you know, long there. Very hatchet shape. 
quite nice neck as well you know a nice thick neck for the good for the guy and you know actually walking around properly on four legs it's got the proper toes and proper thing proper everything a little bit of a shorter tail so not a kangaroo anymore it's pretty spot on to what we know of uh of laura titan so pretty spot on so let that run off and do its thing and last uh, certainly not least for this kind of hatchery we have got aranosaurus So I feel like this one kind of got the opposite treatment of the other ones. So let have a look at you because you look nice posture and I like the black on you. So the original one in game is based off the Iguanodon rig. So it did walk around on all fours, but there has been a bit of debate whether Aranosaurus and things like Matabarasaurus have been walking around on two limbs or four. And the original game, Matabarasaurus walk around on four limbs along with Aranosaurus. But it seems uh, most ev reason, recent evidence suggests that those animals that early may have potentially been walking around on uh, two legs instead of four. So those kind of weird Gondwanian ones, like Aranosaurus and Matabarasaurus. So it's nice that they changed it for the uh, original one, uh, for the Matabarasaurus, but in here I think it needed a new one, you know. So it's instead of walking around on all fours, it's walking around on two legs like a kangaroo. So it kind of bucks the trend of everyone going on all fours. But also it is an earlier animal, so it, it makes sense. So as I mentioned, there had been a bit of debate, uh, depending on its position on the tree. It does make a lot of sense that it was walking around uh, kind of on uh, two legs instead of four, very similar to things like um, Matabarasaurus. But yeah, potentially it still has quite large arms, so it potentially could stand in you know, things like that. It wouldn't be not, uh, unable to. But yeah, it's very interesting. It's got a very long skull, actually quite comparable. It's actually been compared a lot to Mentalosaurus. Very, very like arch, you know, to the leg and head there. Very long, very rounded skull, uh, unlike the one, you know. It's got a small crest, but not really. It's got like a little brow thing going on there. Really, really long skull. Why the long face, haha. <laughs> But I really like as well this how uh, Hockel reconstructed this hump. So a lot of the times, either it's a sail that's like a humpy sail. I think even the comparisons between the uh, Cramped Cretaceous Aranosaurus and the original game Aranosaurus uh, is a great example because that one had a huge fleshy hump and the Aranosaurus from Cramped Cretaceous almost had like something a little bit skinny. But this is a little bit in between, you know, still a lot of muscle and fat in between there, but you can still see the shape of the crest. And it doesn't look, you know, too overly bulky or anything. Looks really, really nice. Definitely a big fan. But yeah, you see that longer tail. Uh, very interesting as well is that this crest, you know, it's got that very tall crest that kind of goes up and then peaks back up around the hips and then goes down the tail. But as we mentioned, it's really interesting as well, you know, it's just the Matabarasaurus rig. And one of the earlier Aranosaurus, Matabarasaurus was originally going to be in this pack, but I think he held it back for the small herbivores pack. Uh, that'll be coming up. But you can see this has got the more original plans. So things like Camptosaurus would have, uh, and this guy, Matabarasaurus, would have had all four or five fingers, you could say, exposed. So you've got the thumb, and you got all four digits of the hand all separate and exposed. And I think the top first three have nails. Um, but you can see the evolution. So we'll have a look at Iguanodon. So you can see Iguanodon a little bit later on the journey, getting bigger, starting to walk around on four legs a lot more. You can see it's kind of coming into one, you know, all joining up together to become that flesh mitten. And then you kind of see with, we're going to do a Laura Titan. That's probably a better example. And then a Laura Titan, you can see it's got that very hoof-like nail uh, that was described in Nectin's very hoof-like nail with the one little one as well. And also, you know, a bit of a fleshy pad, you know, to help better walk around. But yeah, really, really cool. So another cool one that got some love. So yeah, we're going to let you run off and do your things, of course. So we're almost at the tail end. We've got everyone's favorite species. We have got Parasaurolophus. So we've got three different species. This is our first one. This is Crypto uh, Cryptatus. So this is, as I mentioned, this is uh, 
crypto uh Christatus. so this is a species this is one of the this is the third species or kind of the later one but this is a very interesting one so uh this was named by john alstrom and there are three specimens known from the fruitland and kaparowitz formation from utah and new mexico and the second specimen is first known from the kaparowitz it was originally on a specific taxon but had been lumped the main way to tell us apart from the other species of Parasaurolophus is its curved crest uh, is the smallest. Um, well, it was actually, there's a pretty big specimen of um, Cryptocrystallis. It's like a really big one. Uh, but um, yeah, it's got the smallest crest and the most curve as well. And originally it was actually speculized, uh, speculized, or not speculized, um, it was speculated that um, because of the smaller features, it actually was thought to be a female of one of the other species, Walkerai or Tubicun, uh, which are all thought to be males. But these guys uh, would have lived about a million years later. And while it does fit within the um, kind of range of other hadrosaurs of sexual dimorphism, uh, but of different ranges, because of, and it has been found to be its own species because of different ranges in age, distribution, and structures within the crest. So even though most of the time my gut would say... You know, it's just another, it's just lumped or a female sexual dimorphism or, you know, potentially a younger one or whatever. Um, well, this is one of those cases where it's actually been proven that it's definitely a different species. Uh, so, yeah, very interesting, you know, bucking the trend a bit, just like Aranosaurus as being a two-legged one. These guys are bucking the trend and actually proving that they are a different species. As I mentioned, as I mentioned, uh, also found in the Fruitland and Kaparowitz formation, so a little bit more south. Uh, really, really cool. And you can see um, as well, got that really, really thick neck. I'll get into Walker Eye. We'll talk about that study there. And yes, this is also believed to be the oldest one. So uh, this one is from 75 to 76 million years ago. So around the Campanian. These are really, really nice. You can see that thick skull. Love the patterns on this, especially this one. It's really, really nice. Got the correct toes as per usual. Very, very nice. Uh, big bulky body, you know, got almost got like a little bit of a hump going on there. Longer tail, you know, always the tails are a bit too short. Love the patterns. I uh, love that thick neck as well. I think that thick neck fits really, really well. And I kind of wish some of the other hadrosaurs in the game or in this pack kind of had those thicker necks. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. But still really, really cool. We'll get into why we have the thicker necks. I'll get into that soon. But that looks really, really cool. I'll get into that walker eye because that's the holotype. But yeah, nice one. Really, really cool. Okay, I'm knocking out the park once again. So that is Cryptocristatus, uh, which is the oldest of them all. Now we're going to the youngest. This is the youngest. This is Tubcan. So what's very interesting about this guy as well is even though he is the uh, youngest, uh, it actually kind of has the in-between uh, crest. So it is believed to be one of the larger ones, especially with uh, considering the Charnosaurus, which is uh, sister to uh, Parasaurolophus and sometimes considered a different species. Both are from the Mastrichtian, uh, Charnosaurus from Asia, this guy from North America. Uh, so this is kind of one of the later ones. This is not from the latest Cretaceous one, but it is younger it is the kind of, if if you include Charnosaurus within Parasaurolophus, this is the second youngest, with Charnosaurus living in the Mastrichtian being the youngest. But if you don't include that guy, this is the youngest. So this is probably one of the largest of all the species. And this guy lived in New Mexico. There's about to be three different specimens known. And the way to tell it apart, it's got kind of the in-between. It doesn't have the long crest that Walker Eye has. And it's a little bit of a curve like Cryptocristatus. But also has a lot more complex inner structure means other species and this guy is from about 73 million years ago and all specimens have been known from the kirtland formation as well and as i mentioned as well 2014 there is one more species potentially uh charnosaurus uh which is actually nestled quite deeply into parasaurolophus uh and this means the genus would have actually lasted right until the kpg and is known from two continents so really interesting if you put charnosaurus in there i know that's one that has been mentioned in the game files but yeah charnosaurus would have lived right up to the end of the Mastrichtian. So these guys, if if you don't include them, these guys are the oldest. But yeah, really, really cool. Another really interesting one. See that big thick neck there? A uh, little bit more kind of, you know, squatted anatomy. Looks really, really nice. Uh, not too different. 
definitely a big fan definitely a big fan love these guys the bits and i love the pattern as well like spotted pattern like the bright crests really really awesome so i'll let them run off and do their thing and i see you there mr alora titan get out of there so we've got here this is the type species or the type specimen this is the first of them all we'll let these guys run up first though i can see you hanging out right there we don't want you doing that All right, okay, so now we'll have a look. So this is Parasrolophus uh, walkeri, which is the type species. Oh. And of course it has to happen. I know we missed that one, but it was pretty much the same, to be honest, uh, as the other walkout animations. But anyway, uh, you can see this is kind of the more character. This is the first one. This is the famous one. You see every Parasaurolophus has got that famous really long crest. So this is P. walkeri. So or the first species, this is the first name species, P. walkeri. This comes from the Dinosaur Park formation. Uh, but many others could be also be referable to the species. And like stated above, you can see there's kind of differences. The main way to tell the part is got its internal structure. We can't look into the crest because obviously that's not modeled. But the inside of the crest is a little bit more simpler than that of Trubicon, but it is longer and straighter than um, Cryptocristatus. So it's kind of the in-between there. It's also the middle. So it's in between. It lived between 70 about 76 million years ago, I believe. So it actually may be actually the oldest. Uh, kind of. It overlaps a little bit. But yeah, really, really cool. So this is the one, the holotype that was found. Uh, so this is the one. It actually, it's considered quite rare, but there is some other, you know, P. Walker eye kind of specimens around. Uh, and really interesting as well. Uh, I'll get to the. Th I said I'd get to the thick neck, but this is actually um, one of the ones as well. There's a recently a study, um, a study recently, uh, looking at the neck of these guys, and the neck was. Um, actually they found the ligaments because they were originally looking at the ligaments they thought that would be the notch in the neck of the uh holotype specimen was thought to hold ligaments and while they did find that ligaments you know they would have been similar to cows having much thicker necks uh to hold them in a uh, better posture they actually found that these um believe it or not the holotype would have actually been hit by a tree so potentially during a storm or maybe just been really unlucky it was walking and then a tree fell on it and it actually believed to have lived to months or even years after the injury and survived okay with evidence due to bone growth. So it's kind of added the anatomy there. And actually is a pretty gaps give us a pretty good understanding of, you know, hadrosaur anatomy in general. So we do have a pretty good idea what hadrosaurs and these guys would have looked like in general. But you can see that really characteristic long skull, uh, long I mean long crest and the kind of squatter skull. These guys have a little bit of a squatter skull compared to the other guys, I think. You can see that's got a little bit of a longer one. So is this one too. Uh, a little bit of a squatter skull. It is the smallest, I believe, but I believe the holotype is actually immature. Um, so uh, maybe could have got a bit bigger. So I'm, don't, I don't trust sizes too much with these things because, you know, there's always super outlandish specimens. And this one, as I mentioned, is only referred to as the holotype. And I don't believe the holotype could be fully grown. Could be a sub-adult or a young individual. Um, so I'm not going to take it with a grain of salt. But you can see you know, all the changes, about right. Um, fits pretty well uh, with what we know of uh, Parasaurolophus and we do have a pretty good idea of what most look like these guys you know have that little bit of a sh shorter tail but yeah it looks really really nice definitely a big fan so let them run off and do their thing so last but certainly not least we're going to have a look at another cool Asian one so this is Tosantosaurus Oh, and it's blocked by dinosaur again, of course. That's just my bad luck, I guess. So here's the Santosaurus. A really, really cool one. 
So Chisantosaurus uh, is uh, from China, believe it or not. Uh, so that's where it's kind of got its name. It was described in 1950. Um, that specimen has come from the city of Guangdong, where it was found, and it's got the nose spike. Uh, very interestingly. So originally, it was kind of uh, thought to have a very unicorn-like uh, snout. Uh, so originally reconstructed with that very big unicorn. So that's probably most reconstructions you probably know it as. Luckily, Jurassic World was a bit uh, later, and so they managed to fix that. So the reconstructed crest now looks a lot more like this, or almost like very like a big, tall, you know, round, almost like a spoon. That looks really, really cool. So that's a little bit more accurate to what we know of Tosantosaurus. Um, also, you can see that longer head and a big, thicker neck as well. Really like that. Uh, not too much different, of course. It is. Uh, in terms of who it's related to, it is kind of its own little group, uh, but it is relate a little bit closer related to things like uh, it's before the split between Parasaurolophines uh, and Lambosaurines, so it's a little bit more basal in that regard. And as, as mentioned, it's also another Asian one, so that looks quite cool. In terms of its size, it would have been about eight or so meters long, and a little bit leaner and meaner compared to like Parasaurolophus, so a little bit of a leaner and meaner one. And you know, got the correct feet and everything, and yeah. Pretty cool. Love the patterns. This one, I particularly like the pattern. I like the little bits there, and I like this grey one uh, with the bright colours there, I like the bright on the crest. This scale, that detail is just perfect hock. It's just absolutely perfect. So yeah, definitely a big fan. So um, yeah, we'll let them run off do their thing. So thank you, Hawk Owl, you know. Uh, some of these animals like hadrosaurs, we get so many edits for like, you know, theropods and paleo edits, things like that. It's really nice to give some of the animals that don't get quite as much love, like the hadrosaurs and the ankylosaurs and ceratopsians, some nice paleo edits, you know, to make them look quite good. And these all look quite good in general. Uh, Hawk Owl is really uh, stepping up his game as well, and he will be going back and updating some of the other ones uh, just to make them look a little nicer. So yeah, really, really awesome. So, um... Yeah, I uh, really, really, really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. Always remember to hit the little bell icon to get notified of any things. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. And bye bye.